Hello everyone, it's Spurs Ready 96 here, and welcome to the 16th episode of the FIFA 19 Valencia career mode. We begin today's episode with La Liga Santander action away at the Municipal de Batarag, where we'll be playing struggling side Legenas. If you haven't checked out the last episode, I advise you to do so, where we had a mixed bag. We faced Liverpool in the second leg of the Champions League last 16, and then we fell to our first defeat in 12 La Liga games with a defeat away against Girona, but it didn't do much damage. Valencia still have a game in hand over second place Atletico Madrid who have a five point gap and uh, yeah hopefully we can uh, uh, get back to winning ways the last time we won a La Liga game was at home where we thrashed Athletic Bilbao four goals to nil there's Leganes's lineup in the 5-4-1 formation uh, the last time we played Leganes we beat them 3-0 at the Mastaya that was with the reserve team and we will be doing that once again uh, in this matchup away at their ground. And let's look at uh, Valencia's lineup, it's the usual. Uh, the reserve team will be in this match. Going to the first half final, it's the fifth minute, and uh, again, us they have a chance here. Good save from Monona. We uh, pretty, pretty disappointed in that one. Again, us had a lot of time and space to uh, think of a way to uh, penetrate our defense, and that was a good strike there. But a good save from Unana onto the added time and of the first half, and there it is. Very disappointed with the first half. Uh, oh, stalemate in half time and it pretty much said so in terms of performance from Legenas and Valencia we didn't create many chances of course Legenas had that big chance which Onana saved and Mina will be disappointed he's at one of our top scorers in the rush in the uh, Spanish league and half time here is Legenas nil Valencia nil and there goes <laughs> the second half highlights there it is a disaster for Valencia Two games now without a victory in La Liga. The second half was pretty much the same. Very, very boring performance. I mean, Leganes, Mauricio, Pellegrino there will be happy his side. Struggling in La Liga. Got a point against the league leaders. So our game in hand has been not very, really, not been put to good use. We've only extended our Madrid uh, lead against Atletico Madrid at the top of La Liga by one point. So it's six point lead now. And yeah, pretty poor, very poor performance. Uh, Leganes held on held us to a draw and that's what they wanted full time it's Leganes nil Valencia nil at least we got a clean sheet I, I suppose on to the second game of the episode all this episode will be La Liga action this time right at the Mastaya where this time we'll be facing Getafe and the first team will come into play of course they last played against Atletico Madrid in the league with Rodrigo scoring two goals Condobia scoring his first for a while and the captain Pereira scoring as well. There as you can see, look, <laughs> Atletico Madrid have won their game and they've, they've got 59 points, closed the gap to three points, but we have a game in hand and this is ex uh, this is exactly that game. So if we win against Catafe, we will extend the lead once again to five to six points. Um, well, six points. And uh, yeah, we'll still be in control of our own destiny in the title race. Nito, one of the top uh, goal uh, keepers to keep clean sheets in La Liga and the likes of of course our two strikers Rodrigo and Alcacer they're not, in the, they're not the top scorers in the Spanish league I think Luis Suarez of Barcelona holds out hold out a little uh, uh, he's at the top of the uh, to, uh, table so yeah it'll be interesting to see what we can do Alcacer hasn't scored uh, since we beat Espanyol he has, it's been what one uh, two games now that he has last scored a goal in La Liga. There's Getafe's lineup, a classic 4 4 2. They're clearly going to try and go for it. For last time we played Getafe, we were held to a 1 1 draw away at their ground. So, yeah, very. So, this is going to be a tough team to play against, no doubt. And they're very comfortably in fifth place, a Europa League spot. On to the early knockings of the first half, the third minute. Gomez gives it to Alcazar, trips there, but he's got the ball back. Alcazar, he's still going. Good save from their keeper. I think it was David Silva, I think his name is. And Alcazar 
He had to go the long way round to take a chance. Struck on his weak foot. Good save from Getafe's keeper. What is the 25th minute? It's all been Valencia. They've had most of the possession but struggling to create chances. Rodrigo's got a chance here and it's Pereira with the chance. Danny Pereira scores again for Valencia. He scored for the second league home league match running. And the leaders lead Getafe. A much needed goal for Valencia if we're to end this little rut in La Liga with <laughs> only one point in two games and we're certainly on the right path to get back to winning ways in La Liga. Pereira with a great strike from a good pass from Rodrigo and I'm very pleased there as I'm sure the Valencia fans relieved that we've scored <laughs> scored a goal we haven't scored a goal in two matches during this little period either but Danny Pereira's fifth goal in La Liga the captain has put Valencia in front it's Valencia 1 Catafe 0 onto the uh, added time and there goes the first half highlights happy to be in front that's for sure um, we've had a lot of possession but we've really struggled to create chances because Catafe have defended really well at the back but Danny Pereira the captain separates uh, his goal separates the two sides and Valencia look to open their gap at the top to six points to Atletico Madrid half time and the Mestalla's Valencia 1 Catafe 0 onto the 79th minute of the second half. Getafe have been trying to get forward, but we've been doing well defensively. And that's a great pass from Andre Gomez to find Alcazar. He's in trouble, but it's Gomez again. Andre Gomez, he's scored again. It's his third goal of La Liga. And his second goal in La Liga. His third goal overall this season. His pass was the one that set Valencia on the charge. Alcazar could have had a strike, but his pass was uh, interrupted by a rival of a defender. Passed it to Andre Gomez, and he scores. Brilliant. His second goal of the season, and extends Valencia's lead. It's 2-0 against Catafe. Had a time of the second half. And all oh, penalties been given to Catafe. Huge boos. Huge boost by uh, Valencia, and uh, Gabriel is the man who's been who's the main culprit. He yeah, just brings him down in the box. Desperation, trying to get that clean sheet, and the Valencia fans are booing beyond belief. Andres Milik, who's signed for Getafe from Napoli, has a chance to score a consolation goal, and he does. And it's two-one right at the end. Mil uh, Nita won't be getting that clean sheet that he so desperately wanted. And Milik has scored a consolation goal. But any goal we concede will have a huge impetus in the title race if we stumble more in more games to come. And Atletico Madrid closed the gap. You know this title could be decided on goal difference. You do not know. We never know. Uh, so yeah, Milik's sixth goal in La Liga. It's Valencia 2, Getafe 1. And the whistle is surely going to go. Valencia back to winning ways. They've ended a run of two games without a win. And one point in two games. And also not scoring in two games. A 2-1 victory. And now a victory that, may su that the scoreline may suggest. The first line, first uh, half, we were dominant. A lot of possession, but struggled to create chances. But our captain, Danny Pereira, took the lead. Then we extended it after resisting pressure from Getafe through Gondre Gomez. And Katafi, of course, struck back right at the very end through a penalty through Gabriel. But full time at the Mastire, Valencia back to winning ways and six points open, clear at the top. Valencia 2, Katafi 1. Into the third and final game of the episode, probably the biggest uh, uh, game of the episode. This time we go away in La Liga to the Ramon Sanchez, fist 1 against Sevilla. Sevilla have had a really horrible season. They've got one of the worst rec defensive records in the league. But uh, they're going to put on a big atmosphere against the league leaders, Valencia, with that fantastic uh, little uh, banner there. And as you can see, Villarreal are 10th, they're picking up the pace, but they're severe. They're in the top eight now, they've got 39 points, closing the gap to the Europa League positions. They've really picked up form of late. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a really, really tough uh, time away against the three-time Europa League champions. And uh, we'll look at 
There's some good quality in, in Sevilla's lineup. Really, really strong quality uh, that could match any team when they come to their ground. There's no in real life. They held the runners up in the Champions League Liverpool in the group stage to a 3 3 draw. They came back from 3 0 down to draw 3 3, so that's quite incredible. And uh, are they going to disrupt Valencia's charge towards the title? And the fans hoping that might happen. Let's look at Sevilla's lineup. Val Valek is in goal. Then there's Morando and Gomez in the back. There's Messi on loan from Swansea City in the midfield. And there's the likes of Quincy Proms and Vidal in the midfield. And then Luis Alberto and Ben Mida. Ben Yedda, the number nine. Valencia's lineup is the same lineup as it was in the previous game. We didn't keep a clean sheet. Can we try and get a clean sheet here with a thunderous atmosphere at the Ramon Sanchez Piz 1? Let's go on to the 26th minute of the first half. Gaya's got a chance from a corner kick and Vaslik saves it. Gaya, most of our, some <laughs> our defenders don't really score goals, but that was a Ambitious effort, very direct strike, powerful strike too from Gea. Onto the added time, and that was a good effort from, I think it was Gomez. And uh, so far, I would say so good to get a point away at Sevilla is uh, pretty good. But, um, you know, we are drawing 0-0 with Sevilla. It's been, we've been pretty much um, in control of the first half. We're struggling to create chances because Sevilla have defended very well. Half time. It's Sevilla nil, Valencia nil. And let's have a look at the scores from around the grounds. And Las Palmas are holding Real Sociedad to a 1 1 draw at the break. And let's go into the second half. Arles, the 59th minute. Sevilla picking up the pace and are on the attack. Ben Yedda distracted. Always got the ball back. Ben Yedda. And there was Benega. Good save from Nita. Brilliant save from Nita if he wants to get his first clean sheet. Since beating Athletic Bilbao, Benego, I think it was with the strike. Brilliant save from Nito. 77th minute. And Sevilla creating pressure. Proms crosses it in. It was Nelito. The former Manchester City player scores against Valencia. And Sevilla have a huge lead. That could give their Europa League hopes a push and damage Valencia's hopes of going to the title. Brilliant cross of Quincy Proms and the leader with a brilliant header. And Valencia are on the verge of defeat again. They lost to Gir Girona. They're about to lose away to Sevilla. Our waveform hasn't been great. For the last time we got a win was at Barcelona. But since then we've crumbled. Losing to Girona, drawing Leganes, and now possibly losing to Sevilla. It's 1-0 to Sevilla at the stage. 74th minute. Alcazar has a chance. That's a great save in Vesla. Alcazar's chance to put Valencia level in the match was a good save in Vesla. His first his chance to score his first goal in four league games. 77th minute. Valencia on the attack. It brilliant pass from Rodrigo. And Alcazar's on the ball. This is surely his chance. Good save in Vesla. And Sevilla survive. Brilliant display, defensive display from Sevilla. At a time of the fight of the second half, and Valencia have a free kick, a golden opportunity to break severe hearts and get a point. Pinedo does the kick. Sola, he's got the ball. He's going to have to put it in somehow. He does cross it, and good dog with a chance is off the bar. A huge defeat for Valencia. Severe cheer. They've beaten one of their main rivals. Sevilla have been one of the big boys and you can tell, look at the players on the floor, can't believe it. A massive defeat in the title race and that might just help Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, Barcelona stay in the title race. A strike from Nolito, a great header from across the Crimson Proms, means Sevilla take the victory. It's Sevilla 1, Valencia 0 in a great atmosphere. And full time around the grounds in the other game, it was Las Palmas 2, Rio Sociedad 2. Now, unfortunately, uh, we had uh, international duty after after that game. And, uh, yeah, we came back. Uh, the players came back. And our uh, main centre-back, Gabriel, is out for the rest of the season. His injury is uh, a broken tibula. He'll be out for five months. So he'll take no part in this, in 
for the rest of this uh, season, which means that Murray Alvey's second choice centre back will have to replace him, which means that Decape, who's in the you know reserves not doing anything, um, he will have to take Murillo's place in the reserve team. So a massive blow there for Valencia goes from bad to worse. Let's go on to the La Liga Santa de table then. It's certainly closed. Valencia still top with 65 points, 20 wins, 5 draws, 4 defeats now. 53 goals scored, no longer the best offensive record in the league. But we have the best defence still, conceding 21 uh, goals. We have a game in hand over Atletico Madrid, but the gap now is 2 points. It is uh, 1 point. It's really quite remarkable. Atletico Madrid themselves are second with 63 points, 18 wins, 9 draws, 3 defeats, 55 goals scored, 24 conceded and have 63 points. Barcelona, they are a game in, have a game in hand over Atletico Madrid, so a chance to close the gap uh, to three, by 3 points. Uh, they are fourth, third with 57 points, 20, uh, 16 wins, 9 draws, 4 defeats, 53 goals scored, 26 conceded. Real Madrid fourth, also on 57 points, 18 wins, 3 draws, 8 defeats, 45 goals scored, 22 conceded. Atletico Madrid now have the best goal scoring record in the league, scoring 55 goals. Getafe now told you they were doing well. They're only 3 points off Real Madrid in the Champions League, so pretty impressive. They're fifth with 54 points, but of course they, uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona have a game in hand. Real Betis is sixth with 44 points, so 10 points Getafe here, they're really cruising along. Uh, Girona is 7th with 43 points, Sevilla is now 8th, is still 8th with 42 points, so that race for Europa League places looks like it's going to go down to the wire. 9th is Bilbao with 39 points, Las Palmas completes the top 10 with uh, <clears throat> uh, 38 points. 11th is Abar on 37 points, above Villarreal on goal difference, who have also 37 points, and Villarreal are above Espanyol, who in 13th with also 37 points. Real Sociedad is 14th with 35 points, and it's in Sevilla. They have conceded 38 goals. Athletic Bilbao have conceded more. They conceded 40. That's not good. Uh, Leganas is 15th with 31 points, a few points clear of Deportivo La Coruña, who is 16th with 29 points, conceding 46 goals. Alaves is 17th with 28 points, 5 points clear of the bottom three. Celta Vigo still stuck in 18th with 23 points, 4 wins, 11 draws, 14 defeats, 30 goals scored, 45 conceded. Levante is still 19th with 22 points, a point behind Celta Vigo, but Celta Vigo have a game in hand over Levante, who and Levante have 4 wins, 10 draws, 16 defeats, 22 goals scored, 42 conceded. That's record that's level with the worst goal scorers in the league. Malaga, who is still at the bottom with 17 points, 4 wins, 5 draws, 20 defeats, 22 goals scored and 65 goals conceded. Uh, but Malaga have a game in hand over Levante, so a chance to close the gap by, uh, to you know, when they get if it gets 20 points, the gap will be just two Let's points. take a look at the round of 16 results of the UEFA Europa League. Uh, Inter Milan are through 2-4, 4-2 in aggregate after beating uh, Sporting Lisbon of Portugal. Pauk, I think they're known as, they lost 5-1 to Real Betis, so wow, what a defeat. Besiktas, uh, despite winning the second leg, the Turkish side, uh, they won 4-2 against German side Red Bull Leipzig. That's really impressive. One of the ties of the round, Ajax versus Borussia Dortmund. The tie finished 3-3, and Borussia Dortmund narrowly got through 4-3 on penalties. The other rounds, so Bordeaux of France beat Turkish side Fenerbahce, four goals to three in aggregate. Standard Liège had continued their extraordinary run in uh, Europa League with a 3-2 aggregate win over German side Bayer Leverkusen. Hoffenheim, germ of the German side Hoffenheim, lost 4-1 on aggregate to AC Milan. And Southampton, they won 4-1 against Danish side FC Copenhagen. So Southampton are doing really well in this Europa League. Doing really, really well. Complete surprise. They're also doing well in the Premier League, I think, in 8th place. So yeah, doing really well where are uh, Southampton on the south coast of England. So let's take a look at the fixtures for the quarterfinals and some big, big ties as it always will be. And uh, yeah, Real Betis of Spain will host Ch Turkish side Besiktas. Southampton, they will host French side Bordeaux. Standard Liège will face Borussia Dortmund. So that's going to be interesting to see if Standard Liège can knock out, in my view, the favourites. But the biggest match of all is this. For the first time in European competition, it will be the Milan derby into Milan versus AC Milan. What a matchup that is. Let's look at also the last 16 results of the UEFA Champions League. Bayern Munich, the German champions, crushed uh, Olympic Lyonnais 
4-1 uh, on aggregate. As you know, Valencia beat Liverpool uh, on the away goal rule after drawing 2-2 at Anfield. If you haven't checked out that, um, that matchup, check out the last two episodes. Um, Schalke won 3-1 against Portuguese side Benfica by three goals to one on aggregate. Real Madrid, the Japanese league holders are out after losing 3-2 on aggregate to Tottenham Hotspur. So Tottenham, who played Real Madrid last season's Champions League in real life, they beat them 3-1 at Wembley and drew 1-1. They have beaten Real Madrid again in the round of 16. The Champions League holders are out. The other results, you big matches, Juventus and Atletico Madrid and Atletico Madrid narrowly got through they beat the Italian champions 3-2 on aggregate this was a different match though Manchester City narrowly got past the Russian champions of Lokomotiv Moscow only 2-1 on aggregate away win at Lokomotiv Moscow and the draw at home so wow they ran them close Monaco beat Napoli 2 goals to 1 uh, in the, on aggregate after they beat them in the second leg after the first leg was a 0-0 draw Barcelona beat, had no uh, repeat of the real life <laughs> result when they last faced in the knockout stages. They lost, they won 3 1 on aggregate against Roma. Here's the quarter final draw then. <laughs> it's an all German tie as Schalke will play, but German champions Bayern Munich. There's an all English tie as the champions Manchester City host Tottenham Hotspur. And there's an all Spanish t- <laughs> line, uh, there's an all Spanish draw as Valencia play Atletico Madrid. Big, big game that. And the other one is Francis Monaco will host Spanish side Barcelona to see. Pretty ironic that we have three ties with teams in the same country against each other. You know, Germany, English and England and Spain. So let's take a preview at the... Well, let's take a look at the fixtures for the next episode. And we have a huge episode. For starters, we begin with La Liga Santander action against Real Madrid at the Mestalla. If we beat Real Madrid, we extend our gap at the top possibly and maybe ending Real Madrid's hopes of La Liga, of the La Liga title. Then we will continue La Liga Santander action. This time we will be going away to uh, Deportivo La Coruña, who of course, last time we faced them, they beat us at the Mestalla with a 3-1 defeat, the only time we've lost at home in La Liga and then to conclude the episode we will begin the first leg of the UEFA Champions League quarter-final against Atletico Madrid and the Mestalla. <laughs> I think we faced Atletico Madrid well we're gonna face them I think six odd times it's absolutely crazy so yeah I just want to say thank you very much for watching like and subscribe for the series and uh, hope you're enjoying it so yeah I just want to say thank you very much for watching see you next time